Hi, we're going to try uh, using the completion of the square approach uh, to figure out the vertex form of a parabola and then plot it. And we're going to use a couple of different methods. And I'm going to look at uh, some uh, equations that are simpler to work with and some that are a little harder to work with. Now, if you recall, completion of the square is a method um, that takes advantage of the idea of a perfect square. So I'm going to remind everyone what the perfect square format is. So if I have this, a plus b squared, then that's going to equal a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And this is a uh, uh, special case of a uh, factored uh, version and expanded version of a parabola that we can take advantage of. And what we want to do is we want to, since since the uh, vertex form is this, it's a times x minus h squared plus k. You notice right here, there is a perfect square in here. So if we can get some part of our equation into perfect square, then we can manipulate our equation so that it goes into the vertex form. There are several other uses for uh, the completion of the square approach that I'll talk about in other videos. Uh, but right now, we're going to use this approach, use completion of the square, to get this equation into vertex form. So I've got my equation. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this part here and I'm going to separate it with just parentheses from the plus 71. So what I need to do, what I'm going to do is find some number that I would add to x squared plus 16x to make that into a perfect square. So let's look at here. So this is the perfect square format. So if a squared is x squared, then a is going to be represented by x in this. And I need a b squared. Well, I'm going to have to pull the b out of this middle term, what will be my middle term. So my middle term is going to be 2 times a times b. So if I want to find what b is, I need to factor out 2 times a. So I'm going to take 16x over here, and I'm going to say 16x divided by 2, because of the 2, that'll get rid of that, and then divided by a, which is x. 16x divided by 2x is going to equal 8. So what I know now is that b equals 8. So I need, in order to make this a perfect square, I need to add 8 squared, which is 64. Okay, so I'm adding 64 here. However, I have a problem. I can't just add a number to one side of the equation without making the whole, making this side of the equation 64 bigger. So I need to actually be adding zero so I don't change that side of the equation. So I stop actually having an equation. So instead of just adding 64, I'm going to also subtract 64 from um, here. So because the 64 minus 64 is just a zero. Uh, and so I'll be able to uh, work this out uh, using this. And I'm going to pause my video now. Okay. We are back. I paused where I had a visitor from his nap. So we're going to uh, start over where we left off. We were, we had just added 64 and subtracted 64 so that we were adding essentially zero. So once we've done that, what this becomes is x squared plus 16x plus 64 becomes something we can factor using the special case of a perfect square. This becomes x plus 8 squared. So the middle term, so this becomes x plus 8 times x plus 8, which is x plus 8 squared. 
Now the 71 minus 64, well, 71 minus 64 is just 7. And so now we have uh, a parabola graph organized in the vertex form. So now we've got something that's a lot easier to work with. All right. I'm going to go back for a moment and remind and figure out the y-intercept. Now, the y-intercept uh, was 71. If you recall, the whole original parabola was um, x squared plus 16x plus 71. Uh, and so the y-intercept will be at 71 because if x is 0, uh, all we're left with is 71. And in fact, if x is 0 here, this is 8 in here, and that's 8 squared, which is 64, and 64 plus 7 is 71. So we have a y-intercept we could plot at 0, 71. Now, we have completed the square, so we can plot the vertex as well. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit so we can do that. So we will plot the vertex, and the vertex is going to be at, so h is negative 8, x minus negative 8 is the same as x plus 8. So h is negative 8, k is 7, so we have negative 8, comma, 7. <clears throat> so now we want to find the mirror point. So we know... Our y-intercept is at 0, 71. Our middle point, the middle of the parabola, is at negative 8, 7. So halfway across the parabola is to negative 8, which means all the way across the parabola is going to be to negative 16. And the y-value will be the same as the y-value at the y-intercept. Now we just need to plot two more points. So I'm going to grab what I've got here and bring it down here. So if we've got 0, negative 8, and 16, let's pick a couple points in between there. We're going to pick, we're going to pick, uh, I'll pick a point between 0 and negative 8, which will be negative 4. And I'll also pick a point between negative 8 and negative 16, the same distance from my middle point. I will pick something that's also 4 away. So negative 4 is 4 away. And negative 12 will be 4 away. So negative 12 will be my other x value that I will input. And I've set up a couple of points with the y value not included. Right, I'm going to go ahead and plug in my input. I'm going to plug in negative 4 first. Okay, and when I plug in negative 4, I'll go ahead and do this. I have it ready for me for the next one. So, that, that was nice. so I plug in negative 4, and this stuff in the middle becomes just 4. Negative 4 plus 8 is 4. And now I've got 4 squared. 4 squared is going to give me 16. And 16 plus 7 is going to give me 23. So I've got a point at negative 4, 23. Now we can expect that this one is also going to be a y value of 23, but let's go ahead and prove it. That's negative 12. Negative 12 plus 8 is not 4, but negative 4. Negative 4, negative 4 squared is 16. And 16 plus 7 again is 23. So We've got our other point at 23. So let's go ahead and plot all of these points. So let's open up a Desmos. And go back and we know we have a vertex at negative 8, 7. Okay, wow, well, there we go. Negative 8, comma, 7. We had a y-intercept at 0, 71. We had a mirror point at negative 16 on the opposite side of our parabola, negative 16, 71. We have a couple other points at negative 4, 23, and negative 12, 23. I'll zoom out so you can see all that. There's our vertex.
and there's the rest of it. So now we can go ahead and plot our original function, which was y equals x squared plus 16x plus 71, and it matches. All right, so that's cool. We graphed that. I'm going to now do it a sneaky other alternate way. Okay, so let's turn that off. Let's turn that off, and let's be sneaky about it. Now, if you go over to my YouTube channel, you will see a video called Graphing Parabolas Using the Vertex Form 2, Sneaky Patterns That Make Your Life Easy. And there are some sneaky patterns in parabolas. You should definitely watch this video. It's the second video in the Graphing the Vertex Form uh, playlist. But for now, let's plot our vertex. Our vertex is at negative 8, comma, 7. I'm going to home in on that. <clears throat> now, you might notice that our lead coefficient here is 1. And if our lead coefficient is 1, that ends up making our vertex form at, let's say, our, remember the a part of our vertex, so x uh, plus 8 squared plus 7. Okay, so that's nice. We've got our vertex. Yeah, but take a look at what happens. If we go over 1 and up 1, we have a point there. And from there, over 1, up 3, we have another point. If I scroll down from there, over 1, up 5, and then over 1, up 7 will bring us to other points. So we can actually start using the basic shape of a parabola, you know, which, you know, if we had the basic y equals x squared parabola, it's over 1, up 1, over 1, up 3, over 1, up 5, over 1, up 7. We go, each new step is the next odd number Distant, uh, distance apart. So we can actually use that pattern. I encourage you to play with this pattern. So I'm going to pick an x value just to the right, negative 7, and my y value is going to be one more. It's going to go up one more to 8. Okay. And then I'll pick another one. I'll go one more to the right, negative 6 will be my x value. And this time I'm going to go three higher from eight. So I'm going to go to 11. And that's on there too. Let's go drag that down so you can see this playing out. I'll even I'll zoom out a little bit. So then I'm going to pick my next x value. Oops. Okay. I'll pick my next x value here, which will be negative five. And I went up three last time. So now I'm going to go up five from 11. So up to uh, 16. And now I'm going to go up 7. So the steps are 1, 3, 5, 7. So negative 4 will be my next x value. And I'm going to go from 16, I'm going to go up to 23. And I can get mirror points on the other side. I'm just going to copy these y values. And I'll go to the other side. Actually, I'll just, I'll just go the other way. So I'll just plop it here. Okay. And so instead of going to the right to negative 7, I'll go to negative 9. And then I'll go to negative 10. And then I'll go to negative 11. And I'll go to negative 12. And there I have everything is lining up with this parabola. So there's two things I want you to notice. I want you to notice that in our vertex form, in our vertex form, the um, we have just a 1 as our a value. So it's a times x minus h squared plus k. In our standard form, which is what this is called, the standard form, our lead coefficient is also 1 which tells us about the general steepness and shape of the parabola. And you can take advantage of that uh, to make your graphing much easier. I'm going to stop this video, and I'm going to try a couple that are trickier. I'm going to use both uh, the 
five points method that we've been using and this sneaky method.